So what, what, what is chiaroscuro, anyway? There, there were some rather, um, I would say, uh, extra absurd videos popping up lately on the This Is Opera we website, which is um, supposed to be bringing us back to old school singing. I'll, 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 in a different video, on a different day maybe, I'll talk about why this whole idea of old school singing is kind of a big problem. Um, because it's, it's trying to look for something that doesn't exist. Um, so just the short version is that in the old days, quote unquote, if you went out and you talked to a bunch of singers and a bunch of teachers, what you'd find was pretty much the same thing you'll find today is a bunch of people disagreeing, at minus the, the Facebook and YouTube. And that's just the way things have always been and the way they will always be. So if you have this idea that there was a time like long ago when, or a place, you know, I went to Italy and I learned how to do the pop joke. Like, come on. This, like, people were arguing about this shit like 100 years ago, 200 years ago. It's always been that way. It always will be that way. Next, let's talk about this idea, chiaroscuro. And I got a white background so that I can edit in um, some text for you. So what is this term? Well, it comes from, it came first from painting, I believe. And it's, it's, it's a kind of classical ideal about art and it's about proportions. It is said to have been invented by the Renaissance master da Vinci, who discovered that he could portray depth through slow gradations of light and shadow. A century later, the Italian Baroque painter Caravaggio used chiaroscuro in a new way to dramatically brighten his works. He heightened the sense of drama by using only a single light source, such as a lit candle or an open window, which created a high tonal contrast. He quickly gained followers of this style, called the Caravaggisti, which spread across Europe. To give you an idea of how influential Caravaggio's take on chiaroscuro was, consider this. Caravaggio never established a workshop, which is what most of the artists did back then, so he didn't have a school to promote his techniques or to share his philosophical approach to art. But his use of chiaroscuro can be seen in the works of artists such as Rubens, Ribera, Bernini, and Rembrandt. So let's be really clear about something. The, a recent video said uh, dark was the sound of birds chirping. And chiaroscuro was the sound of cows mooing. <laughs> And I, don't, I didn't, I never got to bright because I was laughing so hard. I broke everything in my house. Everything's broken, thanks to This Is Opera, who used to be Mr. Opera, but then I kicked his ass and took his name. Now I'm Mr. Opera. Um, so what is chiaroscuro then? If, because, um, let, let's just, Forget about the idea that chiaroscuro is the sound of cows mooing. You will not find that in any of the quote-unquote old-school treatises. I will, though, post up right here some quotes for good old, from good old um, Manuel Garcia, who did talk to us about a system of arranging timbres so that we create a sense of proportion that we could call chiaroscuro which means light and dark, light and dark. In singing, the way that we get chiaroscuro is that when we sing low, we make the tone brighter because we figure that low notes, low pitches, sound darker naturally. And we figure that 
high stuff whoop, 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 sounds brighter. And the stuff in the middle sounds like something in the middle. And that does not mean taking one timbre, one tone, and plastering it all over everything. That's not chiaroscuro because that's not any kind of arrangement of anything. Like for instance, if you hit a piano, low note and a high note, we perceive the low notes as dark and the high notes as bright. And so that means that in singing, we balance it out by singing the high notes darker and the low notes brighter. It's that simple.